Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's planning application committee meeting. Okay, that brings us on then to item number five then. Thank you, Chair. This item is an application for prior notification for a 15 metre tele telecommunications monopole with associated equipment. The monopole is obviously the largest element with th three smaller cabinets to be sited on the ground near to the pole. It is to be sited on the land located on the corner of Hospital Lane and Goodyear's End Lane. With, ap applications su with applications such as this, as detailed on the agenda, the council can only consider the sighting and appearance of the proposal. So these are the key issues which need to be assessed in the determination of the, of the prior notification. <clears throat> as set out on the agenda, the appearance of the pole has been designed to be visually as uh, the least visually intrusive as possible for this location. The applicant has accepted that the height will result in a visually intrusive feature, but with the proposed design the, and the minimum height, this has been mitigated acceptably. Some objectors raised that they wished for the monopole, monopole to be camouflaged or look like a tree, but that is not something the council can insist on in this location. Finally, the pole is proposed to be finished in RAL 7035, which is just in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, um, which is considered to be acceptable. The sighting of the mast will be just to the southwest of the auto test centre on this small piece of green verge. The red hashed boxes on the slide here show the highway visibility displays and that these are now met following amended plans from the applicant. In conclusion, the sighting and appearance are acceptable and therefore the recommendation is one of approval as set out on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. I have um, a couple of speakers who wish to speak in objection plus a reserve speaker should one of them be absent for this. Um, so the first person I have down on my list to speak is um, Mr Bradley Ellis. So you have, as last time, your three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. In the previous planning meeting, a similar mass was approved because it was stated the council ran out of time and you would lose on appeal. That is not good enough. <laughs> this mass should be decided on good planning and if it causes no loss, harm or injury to the public. If this application was heard in court, it would be thrown out before it was even started. Our reference one shows an image of the council website. If a member of the public enters the word hospital lane in your planning search engine, no results are shown for this mast. You are deliberately hiding this proposal from the public. We informed the council about this via email on July 28th. You have not corrected this. We have not received a reply to 33 requests for further information via F Freedom of Information, our reference two, which includes the conflict of interest payment the council will receive from this proposer. George Elliott Hospital has received 209,000 £180 for the masts on the maternity building. How much money is the council receiving for this mast? The customers for the MOT centre will see this ugly mast when entering the car park. The nearest parking space is just four metres away. This will impact Tony's business and cause a significant loss based on purely visual appearance and extremely close sighting. Our reference three is a recent court document where the impact of electric fields is shown to cause harm and injury to children that are sensitive to them. So much so that these children are classified as disabled due to electric fields. The introduction of this mass would be far greater than classroom Wi-Fi. Is the council knowingly going to harm disabled children? The UK has 2.4 million people with electrical sensitivity, see our reference four. That works out at 4,000... 644 people in the in a Bedworth. What has the council done to ensure no children in the local area are electrosensitive? Our reference five shows the harm caused by electric fields in 1,670 peer-reviewed scientific papers. This can be found online by visiting helpthechildren.org.uk. To conclude, 5G is a new technology that uses beam forming. This has not been independently tested on humans. Electric fields have been shown in a UK court tribunal to harm children. The court looked at the information from the NHS, PHE, ICNERP and ruled against these organisations. 
the court ruled in favour of the overwhelming evidence collected from the scientific community. The application should be deferred until the public gets answers to these concerns. We're also repeating our request for a moratorium on all new 5G telecom infrastructure in the Neaton and Bedworth. Finally, the Council's corporate plan called Building a Better Borough states in its first sentence, promote residents' health and wellbeing. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr Ellis. Um, I understand that Mr Gavin, who is our second speaker, is not here. So we'll move to our reserve speaker, Mr... Oh, sorry, is Mr Gavin here? No, so if he's not, we'll go to our reserve speaker, Mr Smith. Sorry. Sorry, Councillor Evans, sorry, I, didn't, I can't see your hand for some reason. Don't worry, it's fine. Um, um, Mr Ellis, um, have you visited the site? Um, so you know that um, well, at least at three o'clock this afternoon, um, there was actually a, um, a statutory notice uh, attached to the site uh, for people walking past. All right, but for the last month, there would have been a statutory notice on there. So... Um, local residents can can see and know how to respond to the consultation. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is, you make reference to something called, um, uh, sorry, let me get this right, El electrical sensitivity syndrome. Is this something that's proven by Public Health England? The court... Um, decided against Public Health England. They ruled against them. Electrical sensitivity is not, um, according to the NHS PHE and ICNERB, is, is, you know, doesn't even exist. But there's all of these documents and scientists that say it does. 2.4 million people in the UK have electrical sensitivity. That works out about 4,000 of them in the Neaton and Bedworth. Okay, we, thank, we, thank you. Can I, can I, can I just, can I just hold, hold it there? Because I, I feel I'm getting this deja vu feeling from the previous meeting. Can you just switch your microphone off for me? Thank you. Okay, um, and, and I just want to make it very clear. Um, if we look at paragraph 118 of the National Policy Planning Framework, it states, and I'll read this out uh, as written, local planning authorities must determine applications on planning grounds only. They should not seek to prevent competition between different operators, question the need for an electronic communication system, or set health safeguards different from the International Commission guidelines for public exposure. Okay, so what that means is then that, you know, we, we, you can keep presenting this information to us, okay, but sadly, because it falls out of what we're supposed to be considering um, and out of our guidelines, a lot of it we would not be able to sort of um, listen to. Yes, we might have personal sympathies towards some of and a lot of what you're maybe saying, but in terms of the weight that it carries here in this um, sort of arena, um, sadly it's not. It needs to be sort of planning-based arguments, okay? And what I'm hearing is I'm hearing some very generic information, and I know you've sent out this information also to members as well, because uh, I, I got the, the, the slides and the, uh, well, the three attachments that you sent out, as did all the other members. Um, but again, you know, is, is it really pertinent to this particular application? That's all we can consider. It's got to be pertinent to this application. OK, so I'm going to, ask, I'm going to move on because I've, I've, I've stated my case. And I, so if you want to contact me outside of this meeting and you want some further clarification, then I will be happy to, to do that. I'm going to go to Mr. Smith, who's our second speaker. Um, so, Mr. Smith, you have your three minutes when you're ready. Please. Um, on the first thing, I'll, I'll try to call a point of order when you try to start on the last minutes off. Yeah, yeah you, you can't call points of order. That's not for members of the public to do. OK, well, I'll, I'll raise that issue now. Um, at the last meeting, this the last monopole, yeah, Mr. Wilson stipulated the same thing you've just stipulated tonight. Now, I think there's a conflict of interest here with Mr. Wilson having a directorship at transforming the Neaton, yeah, and the Neaton Town Investment Plan, who both have it within their remit rolling out of 5G, yeah? So, should he have spoken? I don't think so, yeah? Should he declare those interests? Yeah, he should which he hasn't, yeah? They're not on his declaration of interests. This council, yeah, you have no head of planning, 
not a head of planning, you can't get one. You've got no head of finance, you can't get one. Yeah? Why is that? Why is that? Is it so, you're so corrupt that you couldn't employ anyone. Sorry, Mr yeah? Smith. Sorry, Mr Smith, can I just hold you there? Sorry, Councillor Wilson, your point of order. Point of order, Chair. This isn't relevant to anything before us to be considered today. I, I appreciate this. However, I am allowing Mr Smith the courtesy of his three minutes. How he spends that three minutes, Councillor Wilson, is up to him. I'm hoping that we're going to hear something which is relevant bearing in mind what I've just said about the National Plot Policy Planning Framework, um, paragraph 118. Um, because, you know, you are entitled to your three minutes, so I can't stop you making the points that you want during about three minutes. Um, but if you're trying to aid your cause, then, you know, you need to start making some planning points, Mr Smith. So please carry on. It is about planning, isn't it? Health and safety, yeah? Health and... Councillors, yeah? Whether it's planning or not, yeah? Your main concern, yeah, is to serve the people of this borough properly, yeah? And if there is any health and welfare concerns, they should come before any legislation. It's only contractual, yeah? <laughs> it's maritime stuff. You say law in your paperwork, yeah? That's the law of the land, not the sea. Yeah, can't get no further from the sea here, right? So let's go by the law of the land, not legislation. You're not ruled by that. You're here to serve the people of this borough. And if their health and welfare is being put, in at, put at risk by other people, you lot should be standing up for us. Yeah? Don't just try and fob us off with, oh, the government said I've got to do that. That ain't good enough. It's not good enough. You're here to represent us. If you're not, we need people in this chamber that are going to look after the welfare of the people of this town. Yeah? You're magicking money up, creating debt for us. Yeah? £150 million pounds worth, which we have to pay off with interest for your harebrained schemes that nobody wants in the town. Yeah? That's planning. That's bad planning. And this council is not representative of the people in this town. It's about time it was. Never mind your legislation. Making excuses for yourselves. Represent the people of this borough. Or jog on and we'll get someone else to do it. Thank you. Right, thank you, Mr Smith. Um, as I said, um, none of what you've said is actually relevant to this meeting. It carries no weight um, under planning law and arguments. And I would suggest you think about whether this is the most appropriate forum. There are other types of council meetings where you can have a say, but this is about planning, and I'll remind you about that. This is not about making political statements, and I'm not really going to carry on entertaining more political statements in future. Okay, I'm going to make that very, very clear now because we're here to do to planning. So if you have serious planning concerns and points, then I will happily take them. I've given you the courtesy tonight of listening to you, um, as we all have, OK? But what you've just done is not really conducive to, um, you know, furthering um, your case in terms of objecting to this particular issue. So with that in mind, then, I'm going to ask members, um, do I have a proposer for a recommendation to confirm this, OK, so Councillor Evans, Councillor Wilson, are you happy to second? Yeah, OK. So do I have any members who wish to speak on this? So I'll take you all to see you, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. For the record, I am not a director of Transforming Nuneaton. There is no such thing as a director of Transforming Nuneaton. There are working groups and boards of this authority, all of which are declared on uh, the relevant uh, pages of the websites. Um, 5G in this location has no bearing whatsoever on transforming Nuneaton or transforming Bedworth or transforming the world, as far as I, I'm aware, to be quite honest with you. Um, in terms of representation, Chair, I'm willing to bet that each and every single one of us as a councillor has far more votes behind us than any single one of these alleged members of the Nuneaton and Bedworth Community Association. So I think we are perfectly able and willing and duty-bound to make a decision on these uh, applications. If they don't like it, they're willing to stand. I'm willing to bet that they won't get very far. But for the moment, we are here and we will do our duty to consider these things. Now, I think Mr Smith is alluding to a group of people commonly known as freemen of the land uh, with these issues about so-called maritime law versus legislation. As someone who works in... Uh, the courts, I can tell you 
and I'm sure um, Director Richardson will tell you, to be polite, it's a load of codswallop. The law of the land is that which is passed by Parliament with the King now, and, uh, or, and then as it was the Queen, sitting by and with the advice of the Lord Spiritual and Temporal and the House of Commons as assembled. That is the law of this land, not the made-up codswallop that is coming out of the mouths of the people that we're being subjected to, and which is quite frankly lying to the residents of this borough. So let us tell the truth and have some real facts. There are no real facts behind any of this to suggest that this is harmful to any residents at all. There may be some people in extremely, extremely rare circumstances who may have this sensitivity to electricity. But there is no fact whatsoever that has been presented that there are 4,500 people in this borough who would be affected. No fact whatsoever. It is a supposition, and it is, quite frankly, ludicrous to assume that, because there is nothing before us which, which accepts that. And this particular legal case which has been quoted is, from what I can tell having read it, very tangential in relation to anything to do with what we have. And having read the facts, and I emphasise the facts, the wavelength that 5G operates isn't in the harmful area that is, is uh, directly harmful to organic tissue. When you get to the X-ray level and that, and that end of the spectrum, then it can be harmful to, uh, to human tissue. But the 5G is not in that range. What we are pre being presented with is a tissue of conspiracy theories and lies. And by the way, Chair, we are not receiving any payments whatsoever beyond the statutory planning application fee for any of these masks which are going up. We get nothing. And I can confirm that as Leader of the Council. There is nothing coming into the coffers of this authority to do that. So the sooner that people actually recognise what the law of the land says and stop living in cloud cuckoo land, the happier everyone else will be. And I'll be voting for this application, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Evans, you had some points you wish to make. Can we please, though, Councillor Evans, try to just keep them on the planning I issues, if we can? Councillor Evans, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. And, um, uh, you know, f for what it's worth, if, um, uh, you know, as, as Councillor Wilson uh, stated, you know, I was elected with over 950 votes in my ward. And uh, if someone who stands outside the George Elliott Hospital baby unit wants, who counts radiation figures wants to stand against me, then yes. fine. Sorry, but Councillor in Evans, terms of the sorry, application itself... Councillor Shepherd, I hear points of order. Go on, sorry. Did say before you started that you want them to speak to the I'm, I'm, hoping, account, I'm, I'm hoping that Councillor Evans is going to bring it back yeah. on track if we so, can, Councillor Evans. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm totally in favour of, of this application. Um, at the end of the day, just think about the economic benefits of better 5G connectivity in Bedworth. And I know that this specific part of Bedworth, I mean, this is why they're bringing it to this specific location, because I can tell you now that Councillor Morton and Councillor Singh often get complaints about um, just how bad broadband is on that part of Bedworth Heath. So, uh, well, OK, fine, nonsense. Uh, that, that's your view. The, the other point I will make, Chair, if I may, is, um, with respect, if 4,000 people in Bedworth Heath were going to be affected by this, um, by this mast... I'm pretty certain, Chair, that um, the CCG, Health Watch, Public Health England, uh, the County Council's health team, the, the hospital, they'd all be sitting in, they would be sitting there today telling us to object to it, and that's not the case. So, um, for what it's worth, if the evidence that Mr, sorry, Mr. Ellis is quoting... You know, if, if, if he brought a, a genuine scientist who's registered with the GMC uh, to sort of back this up, then I might be able to give it consideration. But at the moment, it's conspiracy theory nonsense. So I support this application. There's no planning reason to vote it down, and it has my absolute full support. So I now call this meeting to an end. So, Victoria, when you're ready, if you can end the live stream. <laughs>